consoles ever is Sega Dreamcast. The Sega Dreamcast was an ambitious follow-up to the disappointing Sega Saturn. The Dreamcast featured better technology than its competitors, the N64 and PlayStation. It came packaged with a modem for online gameplay and was the first console with online voice chat. Before Nintendo pushed the limits of second screens, it was the Dreamcast that had the visual memory unit. Yes, the Dreamcast came with everything, except games. How do you kill an innovative, affordable console? You don't give anyone anything to play on it. Sure, there was your Jet Set Radio and Crazy Taxi, but they weren't enough. The Dreamcast chased one of the biggest gaming giants out of the market of producing home consoles. The Atari Jaguar was Atari's attempt to claw their way back to the top of gaming, but what we got was a bulky console and a lot of commercials telling us to do the math. We don't want to do the math, we want to play games. Controversy was eventually stirred up because of Atari's consistent boasting that the Jaguar was a 64-bit console. Third-party developers also did the math and realized that it didn't make sense for them to invest in it, which showed in the lack of games for the system. Also, the games that were on the Jaguar were hard to play given that the controller was unusually bulky and had a numeric keypad. What the f***? Not too long after the Jaguar bombed, Atari filed for bankruptcy. Virtual Boy was Nintendo's attempt to transport players into a virtual utopia. Instead, it was an eye-straining hell. The Virtual Boy was a 32-bit tabletop console that used stereoscopic 3D graphics to create depth when looking through it. Yes, the Virtual Boy was innovative, but it was very uncomfortable to play. It was criticized for causing neck pain, eye strain, and dizziness. Nintendo's answer? Don't make improvements, just slap some warnings onto that baby. Mm, that didn't work. All the warnings had parents seeing red, especially one that warned children under 7 to stay away due to potential permanent eye damage. It got uncomfortable for Nintendo and they discontinued the Virtual Boy a year after release. The Neo Geo and Neo Geo CD were both supposed to be SNK's mark on the home console market. The first of them to release was the Neo Geo that outpowered the SNES. The downfall for this powerful console was its price. It cost 700 US and the games ranged from 200 to 300 dollars. Obviously gamers, mostly teenagers at the time, couldn't afford it. Four years later, SNK released an affordable option, the Neo Geo CD. Using the cheaper CD-ROM, the Neo Geo CD sold for 400 US and the game started at 49. Unfortunately, it was a little too late. The Neo Geo CD released at a time when the gaming industry was moving away from 2D graphics to 3D, with consoles like PlayStation releasing. Stubborn SNK made the specs of the Neo Geo CD identical to the Neo Geo, meaning it could only process 2D graphics. That move cost them users and the system didn't sell. Kuya may be the newest console on our list, but it's definitely the worst. A result of a record-breaking Kickstarter campaign by Ouya Inc., the Ouya promised backers a micro console that would be a cheaper option to 8th generation gaming. Retailing for $100 US, it ran on its own version of Android OS and offered free to play games. Almost a year after Ouya Inc. raised $8.5 million, surpassing their Kickstarter goal by 904%, the Ouya shipped and people were pissed. Besides the poor packaging that had the contents in the box fall out when being opened, the long design of the controller made the Ouya hard to hold, especially with cheaply used plastic that barely had grip. Users reported glitches navigating on the system and issues connecting to the internet. We probably should have figured out that this console was a dud when, in an interview, the CEO of Ouya Inc. needed help naming just one game for the console. Like her, we all did because the games weren't memorable and didn't showcase the depth indie games had.